Disruptive Innovation in Education. Disruptive innovation in general is introduction of a product, a process, or a service in a way that transforms an industry and that meets needs that were previously unmet. And it is really focused on the users. The goal is to meet the needs of the users. So here are examples of disruptive innovations. Cameras, we used to all have a big bulky camera. Some of us remember film and things we needed to do with film from our camera. Now it's your phone and it's very simple and it's with you all the time. Some of us had that big mounted GPS display in our car. Now we can do it on our phone. Some of us had the big Encyclopedia Britannica sitting in our living room. Now you can go online and found everything you need. How many of us spent Friday and Saturday nights walking around in Blockbuster trying to decide what movie we we're going to watch? And now we can do it through a streaming site like Netflix or Hulu or one of those. How many of us call a cab? Now we're going to contact Uber or Lyft. And so these are all examples of technologies that did not set out to supplant another technology, but that just provided something that people were looking for. People were looking for things like streaming services. People were looking for easier ways to be able to get from point A to point B. And in creating that, it disrupted that particular industry or that particular discipline. The primary example from education is computers. When I was in grade school, nobody had even heard of computers. When I was in college, it was introduced. And by the time I was a graduate student, we all had to have email addresses. And I remember thinking, when am I ever going to use this email thing? And now, of course, we use computers all the time, all the way from K-12 education all the way through college education and for so many things we post notes there we give quizzes there we post videos there we make videos there you can do it on your phone you can do it on a tablet you can do it sitting at your desk computers absolutely have created a disruptive innovation in education so if we think about that idea of disruptive innovation what are the needs of our students that are not currently being met what are ways that we could disrupt innovation and improve what we're offering for our students, our users, if you will, in our system? Well, the first one people talk about a lot is individualized training, and particularly training that recognizes the previous knowledge and skills of the students. That would really be ideal to be able to say to a student, okay, you know how to do these things, you've experienced those things, here are the pieces you're missing to reach the same hole that everybody else is going to have. That would be a great thing if we could figure out a way to individualize training. Another thing that society is pushing us towards is the idea of competency-based education. We don't want to just pass people along who are good at taking tests. We wanna make sure they can really do the things that we think they can do and they can demonstrate knowledge of the things we think they know. And then finally, we need to think about how we provide people to have personal balance and choice as they move through their education. Right now, we pretty much tell them, you are gonna give up four years of your life and you're gonna focus on this. But veterinary school has been four years long for decades and more and more information is required for students to know. Is it right to keep it at four years? Should it be longer? Should we minimize what they're expected to know and come up with limited licensure? Lots of different ways we could take it, but this is probably an unmet need that we're going to have to address at some point in the veterinary profession. We are already, as a college, doing some things to meet these needs. So examples of things in the first couple of years are that we are using non-traditional grading schemes. We're moving away from the AF for every course more towards pass-fail, more towards contract grading, more towards thinking about ways that we can ensure that students are mastering the information without requiring them to worry about the points. To that end, we have remediation as a built-in component of a lot of coursework. And that is a great thing because it allows students to use those assessments as a learning tool and it allows us to ensure that the students really are ready to move along instead of allowing them to fail some tests and still get a good enough grade to move along. Now they have to be able to demonstrate that they understood everything as they move along. And then finally, we're increasingly using asynchronous coursework, independent coursework, much of which is online coursework. 
And that gives them some choice in how they're learning, and it also incorporates some elements of universal design, that idea of creating a course in a way that allows many students what they need, the ability to learn within your course because of the materials you've provided or the way that you're presenting that information. In year four, we're already doing some things too. Tracking, which we've done for a very long time, actually looks at that need. What do the students want to choose to do when they leave here? How do we best help them master the skills that they need so they leave here as well prepared as possible? Our partnerships with external parties are another example of things that we're doing to try to provide them with choice and with that realistic opportunity to really function at a fairly high level before they leave our training. The Dairy Education Center, Banfield being used as a primary care clinic, the Golden Valley Humane Society, which for many years was our site for spay-neuter training. Those are examples of great partnerships that help students learn how to work in that realistic setting doing things they're gonna do every day as a veterinarian. And then finally, the movement towards the use of entrustable professional activities or EPAs as a way of assessing students in their clinical year, actual measures of things that they're gonna do as a professional and giving them some advice. Here's something different to try the next time. Make sure you keep doing this. You're doing this really well. Very practical advice for them. These are things that we are doing well in our current program. But what else could we do? So here are some things that I think we should all be thinking about and perhaps talking to each other about as we try to move forward on the spectrum of how we can better meet the students' needs and this disruptive innovation that is probably happening whether we want it to or not. So first is using technology wisely. How can we use technology better? We know from COVID that it is certainly not wise to be apart from each other and sitting in front of our computers all the time. The students have discussed and it's well represented in the literature that that social isolationism does not help their learning or their personal development. So we know we don't want that, but we want to use the technology wisely. How do we help the students learn how to use technology and how do we choose our technologies in a way that helps them grow as a learner and as an individual learner while maintaining the social bonds that we want as part of our larger learning environment. We probably need to look at decreasing the reliance solely on examinations to say that students are successful. Again, that's not appropriate if all we're doing is choosing the people who are good test takers. We want students to be able to demonstrate their skills and their knowledge in a variety of ways. To that end, that means we probably want to move towards more competency-based assessments, and we want to do that throughout the curriculum. It's easy to think about using those entrustable professional activities in senior year, but how do we demonstrate competencies in the foundational parts of their training? That's something that we need to work on as a college. And then finally, we need to pay attention to the needs of our current students as adult learners with responsibilities outside of the building flexibility and scheduling for them, choice within their courses. We want to make sure that they get recognized for what they come to us already knowing and already able to do. If you have questions or ideas about disruptive innovation, I'm Dr. Peggy Root, and you can reach me at rootk001 at umn.edu.